Okay, hello. Today we're going to be uh, looking at the uh, saliva. So we're going to focus on the glands, uh, how it's produced, how it's regulated, and some tumors uh, associated with it. So let's first look at the uh, some of the major glands. Um, the largest gland that we have is going to be the parotid, uh, followed by the submandibular, and uh, the final gland that we're going to be looking at is going to be the sublingual. Now each one of them uh, secretes a particular type of saliva. So the, uh, the parotid gland produces a very serious watery saliva, whereas the, sub, uh, whereas the sublingual gland produces a very mucous type of saliva, and the submandibular gland does a mix of both. So the, the way you want to think about it is obviously it's going to be mostly water and a little bit of mucus. So the parotid gland is mostly water because it's the biggest. Sublingual gland is mostly mucus because it's the smallest. And uh, that's how you get that uh, combination. So um, that's going to be pretty much different glands and this types of uh, saliva they secrete. Next I want to uh, focus my attention on uh, how it is, how, how the secretion process undergoes. So if I can quickly draw a salivary gland, it looks like that. Uh, here we have the asini and this is the tube. So um, initially you're going to get a primary um, okay, sorry about that. Okay, initially you're going to get a primary secretion that goes in there. Um, this is going to be pretty much uh, a little bit of uh, mostly ECF some mucin and some thailand. Uh, sorry, it's A L I N. Okay, for thailand. Now, as it goes, as the as the saliva goes up here, um, certain things are going to be removed. The sodium is going to be actively pumped, whereas chlorine is going to be passively pumped out. And at the same time. Um, Potassium is going to be actively secreted, whereas bicarbonate is going to be both active and passively secreted inside. So what happens is at the end you have saliva with a high uh, sodium bicarbonate and a low sodium chloride concentration. Uh, now, however, at maximal uh, when we're looking at maximum saliva, this gives it less time for the sodium and chlorine to pop out, so you're going to get increased sodium and chlorine concentration when you're salivating at a maximum level. Okay, so next what we want to um, look at is how saliva is regulated. Um, the parotid gland, so let's take a first look at the parotid gland. So the parotid gland uh, is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Whereas the uh, other glands are all innervated by the facial nerve. Now the facial nerve does go through the parotid gland but it does not innervate it. So that's, that's why any type of uh, inter, uh, surgery that occurs in the parotid gland we try to make sure that the facial nerve is not affected. Um, now there is going to be, uh, with, with regards to the parasympathetic, uh, so let's talk about the parasympathetic innervation. Now you do have a superior and inferior uh, salivatory nuclei. Uh, this is located in the brainstem. Um, and this is going to be um, activated uh, with anything that's sour or smooth type of object in the mouth and it's going to be deactivated with anything that is rough. So this is going to be the first one. In the second one, um, we do have appetite centers in our brain. Um, and this is going to be activated by, so it's going to be positive by, hunger. Um, this is, uh, there is also going to be some parasympathetic influence from the stomach and the intestines. And this is related more 
to when um, there is some, t uh, this is going to increase when there is some type of irritation or you're feeling nauseated. And that's because when you swallow the saliva, it can actually uh, help neutralize some of the problems there. Now, there is also, interestingly enough, there's also some sympathetic innervation, and this is actually a positive effect as well. So this is going to increase salivation, but however, it's going to be much, much more thicker type of saliva. And it's going to be uh, controlled by the superior cervical ganglion, and the fibers actually go via the uh, blood vessels. So that's what we have there. Now let's take a quick look at tumors. Um, we have three major tumors. Um, all of them are fairly simple. The first is going to be pleomorphic. Uh, the second one is going to be Warthins. And the f uh, final one is going to be the mucoepidermal. The only one that's malignant is the mucoepidermal. Um, and the, both the pleomorphic and the marthids are not malignant. Um, the pleomorphic, if we take, uh, focus on this, is going to be primarily in the parotid gland, about 60% in the parotid gland. Uh, it's m mostly made up of epithelium, uh, and you know you can also get some cartilage and other types of mesenchymal tissue uh, growth. Um, and the key thing with this one is going to be painless and movable. Okay, with regard to Warthin, this has a, another name which is quite long. Uh, it's called a papillary cyst adenoma uh, lymphomatosum. Um, this is also found in the parotid, uh, in the parotid gland. Uh, and it's uh, a benign cystic tumor. Sorry, benign. Uh, with germinal centers. Uh, and it's, it's also uh, associated with smoking. Uh, then we have the mucoepidermal. Um, in mucoepidermal, you can get squamous tissue, you can get mus mucus tissue, and you can also get some type of intermediate tissue. Um, this is the only one that's primarily found in the smaller glands, and it has a higher chance of malignancy.